Maybe Erie's greatest challenge is to continue to do the work that it's doing and keep the money coming in uh, so that they're able to do the fine, uh, the fine work that we've done. Uh, the world has changed so much right now. It's changing so much that we don't have any idea really what is going to happen. There's obviously uh, not just a food crisis. There's a food crisis that's been building up for a long time. Then all at once, all of these different factors hit all at once. Uh, there's a, a decrease in funding for research. Then at the same time, all at once, a demand for, for food, for fuel, with 30% of the U.S. corn crop going into ethanol. And at the same time, India and China, uh, the developing countries that all at once, they have higher incomes and they want to drive cars too. And not only that though, but as their incomes rise, demand, actually they eat less rice and other things and they want more meat. And it takes eight kilograms of grain to make one kilogram of beef, five kilos to make one kilo of pork and about two to make uh, poultry. And so this is also then calling for the uh, grain crunch. When you pull off all that corn, well, it, 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 it affects everything. And of course the fertilizer is essential to all of it. You're not going to get that kind of uh, 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 nutrient production to make the ethanol or to feed the livestock to uh, increase the changing uh, food habits of China and India without nitrogen, potassium, and, fertile, uh, and phosphorus. And so all of these things are coming together and uh, uh, geez, we were talking yesterday about you know where to have the next meeting of the of the rice uh, uh, Asia Rice Foundation and everything like that. Should we meet here or there at some hub? I think I don't know that we're going to be able to you know just hop on an airplane and go somewhere in a in a couple of years, and that's certainly going to affect. And with all this effect right now, I mean on us, even before all of this, a farmer in Togo or Mali in West Africa, okay, who grows rice or any other crop, a couple of years ago had to pay twice for a kilogram of urea what a farmer in Iowa would pay for it. And the guy in Toko needs it a lot more than the guy in, in Iowa. Now, with the price of fertilizers just double, tripled uh, in the United States, and uh, I don't see it's going to be almost impossible in Africa. And also, that's going to be one of Erie's greatest challenges in, in Africa. Uh, if, we, if indeed there's another African Green Revolution, and I'm, IFDC, I've been a part of that whole uh, planning of this and everything like that. But uh, the Green Revolution ran on fertilizer. There's just no way around that. Uh, it, well, it ran on plant nutrients and the way to get plant nutrients into a, a consolidated form that you can apply is through fertilizers. There is not enough organic matter to be used to switch to organic fertilizers. That sounds like a really neat idea, but it isn't going to work. It's not going to feed the world. And I think the biggest challenge that Erie's going to have in Africa is Oh, you know, how are you going to get the plant nutrients in there to fuel the African Green Revolution? And I truly hope that, uh, that I'll be working with Erie in the future uh, as a collaborator with IFDC. Uh, I, I really can't see, I can't see not doing that, to tell the truth. Uh, we have that.